Family Theater presents Ricardo Montalban, Audrey Dalton, and Una Merkel. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents The Daughter-in-Law, starring Una Merkel and Audrey Dalton. Ricardo Montalban will be your host. Family theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we're to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, The Daughter-in-Law, starring Una Merkel as Amy and Audrey Dalton as Beth. For eight years now, Amy and Bill Wheeler have had a daughter-in-law they've never seen, except in photographs and snapshots. She's an English girl their son Ted married while stationed with the Air Force in England. After a brief marriage of a month, Ted's plane was reported missing, and for months, even years, hopeful letters flew back and forth across the Atlantic between the Wheelers and their daughter-in-law, Beth. But now, in the last few years, the letters have been almost as frequent, but Ted's name is seldom mentioned. It's a bright, sunny morning. Amy and Bill are at breakfast, and Amy is opening the mail. Yeah. Anything for me, honey? There's the plumber's bill and the card from the filling station. Hmm. Time to have the oil changed in the car. Oh, and here's a letter from your sister. <laughs> I bet that kid of hers is in trouble again. Well, all you can do is send us some more good advice. Poor Ronnie, he's really just mischievous. <laughs> oh, Bill! A letter from Beth. Hmm. I wonder how she's getting along since her mother's death. Well, let me see what she says. You know, I did write and beg her to come over and live with us. Is this the first letter from her since she wrote? Yes. Oh, here's another snapshot of her. Oh, let's see. <laughs> oh, she's certainly a beautiful girl. Mm. Hi, Mother. Hi, Dad. Oh, good yeah. morning, Joan. <laughs> I just got a letter from Beth, dear. Listen while I read it. Oh, we'll make it quick, because I have to rush. Dear Mother and Dad Wheeler, after giving your very warm and generous invitation a great deal of thought... I have come to my decision and decided to accept. Oh, oh she's coming here to live. Hey, oh, how no. wonderful. That's great, just great. Oh, oh, I'm so happy. The poor girl all alone now with her mother gone, too. Well, she's got us. Well, when's she coming, Mother? Mm, let me see. Saturday. <gasps> Why, that's tomorrow. Oh. oh, good heavens, and there's so much to do. <laughs> <laughs> just like a woman. The house is spotless, but there's so much to do. Well, there's first. <laughs> you to move and new drapes for the guest room? Oh, hey, I've got to run, you two. See you at dinner. Bye, dear. Oh, uh, wait a minute, Joni. I'll drive you to the bus stop. You'd better hurry, too, Bill. You know something, Amy? I don't remember seeing you look so happy in almost eight years. I know, and I am happy. It'll be almost as though, as though Ted were home again. Yes, yes. Bill, I wonder why Beth is never married again. How would you like it if she did? Why, I think she should. Of course she should. Good. I'm glad to hear you say that, Amy. I'll see you tonight, honey. Bye, Bill. Oh, here she is, honey. Oh, Beth. Beth. Oh, why, you're even prettier than your pictures. That's very sweet of you to say that. Come into the living room, dear, and let's sit down for a moment and talk. I'll take Beth's bags upstairs, and then I'll move that dresser, Amy. All right, Bill. Here, Beth, sit here on the couch beside me. What a perfectly lovely room. Oh, do you really like it? Oh, yes, it, it's so comfortable and warm-looking. Well, bright slip covers and drapes can do a lot to a room. I'm, I'm afraid that Ted thought our home was dreadfully staid and formal. Oh, Ted was a boy who always had his feet on the furniture. You say his name so casually. Of course. He's gone, but we, we speak of him often. Do you? What a beautiful piano. Oh, do you play? Yes, I adore music. Oh, Joan will be glad to hear that. She and her friends have, what do you call them, uh, jam sessions. Well, I'm afraid <laughs> I don't play that type of music. <laughs> then you can play for me. I like the less violent kind myself. Where's Joan? 
Well, she should be home right now. She gets out of work at 5.15, and she's so excited about your coming. She has all kinds of wonderful plans for you. You see, this crowd of young people that she goes with have lots of parties and picnics and, oh, just lots of fun. Joan's engaged to a boy in her office, but then I think I wrote you about that. And he has many friends who'll be so glad Mother to Mother Wheeler, see- I'm afraid I'm not much good at that sort of thing. I mean, well, you see, in these past years, I've kept very much to myself. But, my dear, you're young. Now is the time when you should have fun. There was only one person I could have fun with. That was Ted. I was always rather quiet, but he teased me about it, and he taught me to dance and laugh and do all sorts of things I'd once thought idiotic. And he'd want you to go on doing the things that he taught you. Perhaps, but I can't. Oh, golly, you're here at last. Oh, Beth, Beth, how perfectly (laughs) wonderful to see you. Don't let Joan scare you, Beth. She (gasps) is rather overwhelming. Hello, Joan. How nice it is to see you at last. Oh, gosh, what a gorgeous accent. (laughs) Hey, do you think you could teach me to talk that way like you do, Beth? (laughs) I wouldn't want to. I love the way Americans talk. (laughs) They're so colorful, so explosive, like fireworks. Hey, there's all the down here. Oh, I might have known. You're home, Uh Joan. (laughs) Well, now that you've met us all, Beth... Think you can stand us? Oh, yes. It's just a, I wonder if you'll be able to stand me. Oh, you're one of us already, dear. You have been for years, even if it was only through letters. Joan, why don't you show Beth where her room is while I put dinner on the table? <laughs> Come on, Beth. I tell you what, after dinner the crowd is coming over and we'll go... Uh, she's, uh... No, what's the word? Mm. Uh, not exactly quiet, but... Uh, uh, reserved. What's the matter, Amy? <laughs> you look funny about something. I... Uh, I can't quite explain it, Bill. It, it, it's as though Ted had brought her out of the shadow and into the sunlight, and now she's gone back beyond the shadow into the darkness. Exactly what does all that mean? Well, she's living in a world all her own, one that won't ever change but just stand still. Well, I still don't get it, but I suppose you know what you mean. Remember when we were wondering why she'd never remarried? Yes, and you said you thought she should get married again. She hasn't because of Ted. I sensed that when she talked to me. Oh, but why? I don't know, but I certainly intend to find out. It's almost a month later. Joan has found Beth a job in the office where she works, and more than that, has tried to draw her into her circle of friends, but Beth has quietly refused. Tonight, Joan is having a party in the living room. Bill and Amy are reading in their bedroom. And Beth is sitting in her own darkened room, staring out into the darkness. Yes? Come in. Sitting in the dark, dear? Here, let me turn a light on. I was reading, but the story wasn't too interesting. Really, Beth, I do think you should go down and join the party. They're having such a good time. I'd really rather not. Uh... Do you mind, dear, if I ask rather a personal question? What? What is the question? Why? Well, why haven't you ever married again? Why do you ask? Because I think you should. You think I should? Of course. Oh, Beth, you're young and lovely and you have so much ahead of you. But you're Ted's mother. I think that's all the more reason to be concerned. I love you as though you were my own daughter. I want you to be happy. I'm as happy as I can ever be. You've given me a lovely home to live in, a family, and Joan has found me a job. And I'm so terribly grateful to all of you. That's all I want. Just what I have, no more. That's hard to believe, Beth. I think in time you'll change your mind. No, never, not ever. Beth, would you do me just one favor? Of course, Mother Wheeler, whatever you want. Go downstairs to the party, just for a little while. All right, but just for a little while, and to please you. Thank you, dear. It will please me very much. I really must go upstairs. It's very late. Don't rush off. Golly, we just came out here. Anyway, it's only 11.10. That's not late. It's late for me, Mr. Hibbert. I'm not accustomed... The first name's Dave. You know, I was beginning to think we were never going to meet you. Well, I, I don't care for parties too much. What? You don't like parties? Well, don't they have parties like these in England? Why, I, I suppose they do. As a matter of fact, during the war, Ted, we went to a few. Swell guy, Ted. 
He was a friend of mine, you know. You knew him well? Oh, sure. We traveled in the same crowd. Now, there was a guy who liked a good party. Funny thing, though, he didn't date girls very much. Usually went to a shindig by himself. I guess he was looking for you. You know, I can see his point in waiting. What kind of work do you do, Mr. Hibbert? Dave. Why, I'm the assistant manager of a sporting goods store. My dad wanted me to go into the real estate business with him, but well, I was always crazy about sports. You know, football, baseball, hunting, and fishing especially. Do you like sports, Beth? Why, I don't know. I've never known anything about them except riding. You like to ride horseback. Hey, that's swell. We'll go sometime. Well, I... That's very kind of you, and now I must go upstairs. Oh, come on. We haven't even danced yet. No, really, I, I must go... I too. How about some Cokes? Uh, just what I've been wanting, Joan. Thank you, Joan, but I'm going to bed. Good night. I'll see you in the morning, Joan. All right. Good night, Beth. Well, she's everything you said she was, Joan, but... But what? I don't know. It isn't a coldness, exactly. Kind of as though she... Well, she were afraid of letting you know her. Oh, yeah, I know. We can't figure it out. I guess she's just the kind of person who doesn't get over things like most people. I know, but eight years. Well, Mother thinks Beth was always a very shy, retiring sort of person. And when Ted came along, well, you know how he was, Dave. Mm -hmm. The crazy things he did, noisy, always laughing. Well, for a while, just that very little while... She came out of her shell. And then when they told her his plane was missing, well, she just went back inside of herself even farther and stayed. Well, maybe, just maybe, somebody can bring her out of it again. I was hoping you'd like her, Dave. She needs somebody just like you. You and Ted were always a lot alike. Yeah, but maybe that's not a good thing. Joan. Oh, hi. What you doing? Cleaning out this bookcase. Hand me that stack of books on the chair, dear. Okay. <laughs> Here. Where's Beth? She walked down to the library. There was some special book she wanted. I saw Dave Hibbert over at the tennis courts. Oh. He wants her to go to the Mitchell's party tonight. <laughs> Said he'd been trying to get hold of her for a week. I know. Every time the phone rang, she'd run upstairs. Then when I'd call her, she'd say she was just going to take a shower or going to bed or some such thing. <sighs> He's certainly persistent, I must say. Hand me the rest of the books, Joe. Uh, here you are. Oh, golly, Mother, I just don't get it. Is she going to be like this the rest of her life? Oh, Joan, I don't know. I worry so about her. If there were just some way I could get to her and break through that shell. Oh, say, where's Dad? Where is he usually on Saturday afternoons? Down in the basement at his workbench. Well, I guess I'll go down and see if I can bribe him into letting me use the car this <laughs> afternoon. I want to get a new dress for tonight. And... Uh oh, Joan, will you get that call? I just hate having to give that nice boy another excuse. Beth, get in the car. I'll drive you home. Well, I really like to walk. You wouldn't turn me down when I was looking for you especially, would you? Come on, jump in. Looking for me? Sure. Well, I, I never got you on the phone, so I came after you. Oh, I called about 15 minutes ago, and Joan told me you'd walk down to the drugstore. Oh, I see. Look, Beth, uh, Tom Mitchell's having a party tonight, an outdoor steak fry. I'd like you to go with me. Oh, that's very nice of you, Dave, but I really couldn't. Look, Beth, if you... Don't, Dave. I can't go out with you ever. Can't? Why don't you want it? All right, then, let's say I don't want to. I don't think you really mean that. I do mean it. All right, Beth. Okay, whatever you say. Except, I think you would have found you'd like... No, I guess not. I didn't mean to be so blunt. I'm sorry. It's all right. Don't worry about it. What is there on the sink, Beth? Put it on that blue butter dish. This one? Mm-hmm. This is the dish 
Ted and I sent you that Christmas. Yes, and I've always loved it. <laughs> I won't let Joan handle it for fear she'll break it. She's such a butterfingers if you don't mind the pun. Of course, you know, sometimes I think she breaks things just so she won't have to wash dishes. She and Ted were just alike, both of them trying to get out and play before the dishes were carried from the table. Yes, he is like that. <laughs> you, you said he is like that. You don't believe Ted is dead. No, I, I don't believe he's dead. But eight years, Beth. Eight years. There was never any trace of his plane. Oh, the war department declared him legally dead years ago. I know. But you never said anything, never gave me any idea that you believed. No, I've kept it to myself for a long time. I found people would look at me strangely if I spoke of Ted as still living. I could understand why they'd feel that way. But in my heart, I knew. Even when you wrote and said you no longer had any hope. But you mustn't. Don't you see? You mustn't. I must. I, I can't believe anything else. Oh, Beth. Beth, dear, it's wrong. Please don't say that. He was all I had. He was me. As long as there's a chance he's alive somewhere in this world, I've got to wait. Even if it means the rest of my life. But it's not right. And I'm going to prove it to you. You've got to believe he's dead. Please leave me the little bit of happiness I have. Would you... Will you let me talk to you? Please, I'd, I'd rather not... Better still, let me show you something. Beth, Beth, I want you to see these. Whose letters are they? From the wives of the men in Ted's crew. I met the boys and their wives when the group was stationed in Texas. The girls and I kept up quite a correspondence. This one is a note from Bob Greer's wife. Bob, yes, he was Ted's closest friend. Well, this note was to tell me she had remarried two years ago. And this one, it's a wedding invitation. She was Steve McFarlane's wife. She married another flyer. And this one's a thank you note for a wedding present. Barbara Taylor. She's Barbara Henderson now. Are they all the same? All but one. One's a letter from Harry Klein's wife. She wanted me to know she's engaged. It's so strange. You, Ted's mother, trying to make me believe... Not trying, Beth, making you believe it. Because, you see, in your heart, you really know. No, I don't. Oh, oh honey. <laughs> there, there, honey. It's best this way. I know right now you feel as though I've taken your brightest dream and crushed it. But it was just a dream, dear, and, and the world is a place of realities. Or oh, a little bit of dreaming's all right, but for real happiness, we have to live among real people. And you deserve that happiness. Oh, Beth, honey, you deserve it so much. Because you gave my son the greatest happiness he'd ever had. Supposing he'd never had it at all. Well, what do you think, Amy? Is she coming downstairs to the party? I don't know, but I've kept my fingers crossed all week. Mm -hmm. Uh, did Joan ask Dave to come? Yes, she phoned him yesterday. Uh, this suspense is driving me crazy. Mm. And besides, my neck feels like it's broken trying to see in the door. Oh, well, it's worth it, isn't it? Watching? Uh, well, yes. That is, if she comes downstairs. Otherwise, I could be in bed with a good book and feel comfortable. Oh, I don't know. She's acted awful funny all week. Yes, but she's changed. Both Joan and I have noticed... I can't exactly explain how she's changed, but she's different. I noticed how when the phone would ring, her head would turn quickly in that direction, and twice when some of Joan's crowd picked her up in a car, Beth walked to the window and watched them. Oh, poor kid. All mixed up like that, not really knowing what she believes. Yes, and when she broke down, oh, I felt just awful, Bill, as though I'd done something to her I shouldn't have. It was as though I'd, I'd torn away her only protection. And Bill, hmm? look! Well, look! She did it! And look at her, Amy, look at her. Lovely, just lovely. Oh, why, I've never seen her look so beautiful. <laughs> oh, look, there goes Dave. <laughs> The romantic Mr. Wheeler. Well, I was pretty good at that stuff myself, if you'll remember back a few years. Stuff? Oh, men use the most appropriate words. A good word. Describes a lot of things. Yes, like food and the icebox and the wax you put on the car and love. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, now we can relax. I thought you said you'd rather be in bed reading a good book. Well, it's kind of nice out here on the porch. Mm. Just swinging back and forth. <laughs> ah, nice moon. Bill, mm -hmm. if you'd move your arm a little, I could put my head on your shoulder. Yeah. There. Ah. And now, your host, Ricardo Montalban. Some folks just love a symphony. Others, a Dixieland band. Boogie Woogie, maybe that's your choice if you happen to be an extremist. Me, well, as a matter of fact, I enjoy all kinds of music. In a sense, though, I'm an extremist too. For me, there is a whole wonderful symphony in the jingle jangle of a bunch of keys. Uh, let's see. This shiny one, the passkey to my home, lets me into the shouts of my kids, the welcoming kiss of my wife, and uh, <clears throat> the smell of biscuits baking in the kitchen. Uh, the key to my car, a passport, so to speak, to the mountains, the seashore, and all sorts of pleasant places. This little one now, my mailbox key, much more important than its size. Just full of surprises, this little fellow. Well, I forget what this one is, though I've kept it on my ring for years. Uh, are you like me, afraid to throw away an old key, thinking sometime, maybe tomorrow, you'll need it, perhaps to open an old treasure chest somewhere, or a castle, perhaps in Spain? I bet you are. It's kind of fun contemplating a bunch of keys. I never think of keys as locking things up. It's always more pleasant to think what they'll open up. You know, prayer is a sort of key too. But I'm afraid for all too many of us, it's like the old key on my ring. Oh, it's there, but uh, we've forgotten its particular use. But it's a tremendously important key, prayer is. For it opens the gates of heaven unlocks nature's greatest harmonies and lets us into the boundless treasures of God's mercy. Now, here is a closing reminder. The family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you The Daughter-in-Law, starring Audrey Dalton and Yuna Merkel. Ricardo Montalban was your host. Others in our cast were Joy Terry, Bill Johnstone, and John Stevenson. The script was written by Elaine McMahon, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed and transcribed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when Family Theater will present The Longest Hour, starring Loretta Young, Jean Lockhart, and Robert Stack. Join us, won't you? This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.